Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ksenia Pro and today I'm going to show you a very easy lighting setup for studio maturity photography. This is my go-to setup that I use for a lot of the majority of my uh, maternity photos. Now, if you're new to my channel, if you don't really know me, my name is Ksenia Pro. I'm a luxury maternity photographer and I've been specializing in maternity photography for the past five years. And now I'm a photography educator and the creator of the Luxury Maturing Photography Academy, where I teach other maternity photographers how to actually pose, light, and edit the pictures with confidence. You can create beautiful results for your clients. And also you become the best maturing photographer in your area. Okay, let's get started. And we're gonna go through all of the equipment, a very basic equipment that you use to set up um, your studio for maturing photography pretty much anywhere. But if you have a decent sized space, like a living room size room, um, that's all you need. But you can also shoot in like a smaller space and I've been using my small in-home studio for five years and it worked just fine for me uh, with some adjustments. Um, so first things first, you need uh, a backdrop, right? So I use a lot of, a lot of my work, I use uh, seamless paper. So you can find it on Amazon, B&H, uh, or Adorama. So just depending which vendor, which website you prefer. Uh, but I highly recommend if you can fit like a larger size, this is 96 inches, so it's like a wider uh, backdrop because you have more flexibility. But again, depending on which um, room you're working with. So you know what, it's actually 107. <laughs> so the width of the backdrop is 107 inches across, which is almost nine feet wide. Um, if you can fit it in your room, that would be recommended. That's what I used in my small studio space and I went just like from one wall to another, but it actually gives you more room so you don't have to Photoshop a lot of the backdrop around your model, um, especially if you want to create like landscape type of orientation pictures. Um, so if you, the next best thing for you, if you can't fit nine feet wide, you can go to 86 inches, which is wide enough, but it's like a little bit more compact, especially for traveling and things like that. Um, so for the backdrop holder, um, now it depends. So we have like now I'm in my bigger studio and we actually built a custom built wall where actually where we attach the backdrops and we can paint the wall itself as well. Um, if you are in a garage, in a room in your house or in your client's um, space, <laughs> I highly recommend that you use uh, a backdrop holding system. So it's a lighter, more portable type of system. So it includes two stands and uh, there's a bar across. Again, you can order them from any photography um, store or you can order from Amazon. Let me show you how it looks. So there's two stands that are um, similar to light stands and there's a bar that goes across, there's an opening and there's a screw on top here. So you can just put it through and tighten it. So you slide the backdrop through because it has the opening inside, it's like a roll of paper. Um, so you put it through and then you just secure the other side. And usually for these type backdrop systems, uh, this bar is adjustable, so the width could be shorter or wider, depending on your needs. And I highly recommend if you get it, the, um, uh, the bar is telescopic, so you can control how much width you can, because this one that I have here, it's kind of like more limiting, uh, because it's not folding in and out. Um, so this type of system is easier to travel with, or if you need to put things away, if you're shooting in your house, or somewhere on location, you can just like set it up, break it down, put it in the storage and open up the space for something else. Um, now, if you were in a permanent type of space, I highly recommend that you use uh, the backdrop system that's either wall or um, ceiling mounted because it's just easier. You can keep all of the backdrops on the wall and just like um, slide them out. Now, once you have the backdrop installed, <laughs> the next thing that you need is the actual light, right? So uh, for the easiest setup for my turning photography, I use just one light and I just move it around my model. Um, so let me show you what I use for 90% um, of my studio maternity photography pictures. And this is the setup look like, it looks like this. Um, let me make it lower so you can see it. Normally it just sits a little bit higher. Um, so we have the C-stand 
And I highly recommend, again, you can order it from Amazon, B&H, Autorama, those type of stores. So it's called the C stand because it's like um, stainless steel and it's uh, more sturdy than regular stands. And also I love that it has a boom arm because um, you all of a sudden have more control over the light and the position of the light. So that's what I use a lot. Um, and also I added wheels to my C stand because it makes it so much easier. However, if you're in a smaller room, don't worry about wheels maybe because you're not gonna be moving it around so much but if you're like in the larger space and you need to move the light from one corner to another highly recommend the wheels because this thing gets heavy i'm pretty strong okay um but uh if you are like a tiny woman it's it's heavy so you can't really move it around as as easily um also on my c stand so for the light i have my studio strobe which is uh godox Flashpoint um, 600. So this is the one that I love because it's cordless. So it's not attached to the wall, to the outlet. Um, that's why I love it so much because you can move it around. You can easily pack it and go on location as well. Uh, but even in the studio, I just want to eliminate um, the cords as much as I can. So there's less chances that somebody will trip over or even usually myself. <laughs> I would trip over and like knock down things a lot. Um, so the next thing as a light modifier, what I use, I use a large parabolic umbrella. And this one is by Godox, so I just recently upgraded. I use another one. And I, honestly, anything is okay, like any brand is okay. Godox is pretty neat, um, and there's two types. This one is actually white inside. So I changed, I use the one with silver. Uh, I don't know if you can see. So this one has white inside, so the, it produces even softer light. So the reason why I love the umbrella like this is because the light inside is pointed inwards. So the light inside is pointed into the umbrella, so it bounces off of the inside of the umbrella to create to soften, right? And then there is another layer of softening is actually this diffuser panel. So that's why I love this setup so much because it creates a large source of light that's super, super soft. And that's the signature, that's what I use for all of my pictures because it's so easy to work with. And it also it's flattering for most people, for every, it's like the most flattering light you can imagine. Um, also what I did, what you can do in addition to buying the actual Godox um, studio strobe, I added the extension because uh, this is what's gonna help reduce the weight on top of the setup. And this, so this is very light, but the actual power block, this is why we don't have like a lot of cords because we have the power block right here. It's pretty heavy. Um, and um, I actually created, uh, added an extension, which is very light. So this cord just connects the battery, basically, it's the battery pack. Um, it connects to the actual bulb where the light is producing. Um, and this is also pretty heavy. And because I put it on top of my lights and it actually serves as a stabilizer for, it's kind of like the sandbag, if you will, for the light stand so it doesn't go anywhere. And my go-to setup is when this light is set up just a little bit higher than the person's height. So make sure that this thing is not like getting in your frame of uh, the edge of the umbrella and also it's tilted down just ever so slightly and now by turning it um, towards the person or away you can control how much light hits the face and how much light hits the backdrop as well there's also other types of setups that i use with just one light and i teach all of that inside my luxury maternity photography academy so if you want to learn more about the specific lighting setups especially for my training photography, so we can create better shapes, create some artistic images, and accentuate the pregnant body. Make sure to check out the information about my Luxury Maturing Photography Academy, because this is where I share all of my insights, all of my tips, and I also update and create some new videos um, when I start doing something differently, and I start using some new techniques. I make sure to share it with my students as well. Now, if you think this video was helpful for you, make sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit the bell button. 
And you know that the more likes we get under this video, the more other photographers who are struggling with lighting can find um, this video and can get access to this information. And my goal here is to help you become better photographers, better business owners, especially if you are a maternity photographer, because this is what I specialize in. All right, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.